This lesson is on arithmetic series. This means we're going to be looking at sums of terms in arithmetic sequences, where arithmetic sequences are sequences of numbers that either increase or decrease with a common difference by addition or subtraction of a number throughout each term. So an example of that is, say, if you start with 5, common difference of 5, meaning adding 5 each time, say for 8 times. So the sequence would look like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Your favorite sequence, I'm sure. So how do we find a sum? And the reason why we're looking at a partial sum sum of the first eight terms is because can you imagine adding up an infinite number of terms that are constantly increasing or constantly decreasing? Well, you're right, yeah. If you keep adding them forever and ever, they're just going to get bigger and bigger and so they end up equaling infinity. So all we can look at in terms of arithmetic sequences are partial sums, sums that go from, say, the first term through to the eighth term, for example. So how do we approach this? I mean, eight terms, sure, you could type this into your calculator, but what if you have 50 terms or even more than that? Well, let's work towards a method. There's a neat method that you can take, and that is taking, say, the sum of the first eight terms, which is written out like this, in this particular case. And then you could actually add this sum again. However, this time, reverse the order. So start with the last term and go backwards. So what do you notice about each term now? Well, each of these is adding up to 45. Look at that. When you reverse the terms, the first and the last, and then the second and the second to the last, and so on, you'll notice that the sums are always the same. And this comes uh, based on the nature of the arithmetic sequence. So, how many sums are there? Well, there were eight terms. So, really, if you took eight times 45, you'd have the same as adding up two of these sums, two times the sum of eight terms. So if you took eight times 45 divided by two, you'd have the sum. And in this case, that's 180. So let's generalize this method. In general, you'd have your sum of the first n terms, where these are arithmetic sequences being added up into a series, and then the other one being reversed, so instead of starting with the first term, starting with the nth term. Now when you add those up, notice what ends up happening is your sum is actually a1 plus a n. And you'll notice if you add these, the differences will cancel and you'll still have a1 plus a n. So what ends up happening is you'll have a1 plus a n, but how many times? Well, it'll be n times. But since you'll have two, you'll divide by two. And so that gives us the formula half n times a1 plus a n. So now that we know that, Sn is half n times a1 plus a n. We can now find various sums. So let's find the t sum of the first 10 terms for the following. So S10 is going to be half times 10 terms of the first term plus the nth term, the last term, in this case the 10th term. So we have to find a10. And so we can go back to our nth term formula and use a1 plus the difference times 
the number of the term minus 1, and that's coming from your nth term formula. So what's the tenth term? Well, that's 8 plus 5 times 9, which is 53. So now we can finish this off, half of 10 times 8 plus 53. So that's actually the same as 5 times whatever 8 plus 53 is, 61, giving us 305 as our partial sum. Now we have our nth term formula. Let's try it this way. So find s of 10, that's half of 10 terms. And then the first term, which is 3 plus 4 times 1, plus the last term, which is 3 plus 4 times 10. And when you calculate that out, you'll have the desired term. So the sum is 250. Recall that sums can also be written in sum notation. So in this case, this is saying take i from 1 to 100 and find the answer. So this is actually the same as finding s 100, given that a n is n. So that's going to be half of 100 terms, where the first term is 1 and the last term is 100. So that's really 101 times 50, which is 5,050. Now, what does this mean? Well, this is Sn, where a n is also n, and so we've got 1 half times n terms, a first term being 1, and the nth term being n. And so we're just going to simplify this because since we don't know n, we just need to develop a formula and that's n times 1 plus n over 2. And this is a very well-known formula. It's basically, in general, if you want to take 1 through any number and add those numbers up, you'll have this formula to fall back on. Let's continue. So now we're taking 1 through 50. And k is some constant k. So notice that i and k are not the same. That's not an error here, because this one has an i here. So k is being added 50 times. So all that's happening is really it's saying k plus k plus k plus k. k is some number. We don't know what that number is, but that's OK. Notice the i is not even present. So really, this is actually just 50 k's. Now this one has k each time, so it's actually the same as k, some constant, times the sum from 1 to 50 of i. And we already know that the sum of 1 to, to 50 through times i is going to follow that formula we had on the previous slide. So this is actually S50, and so what's happening is we have 50 times 1 plus 50 over 2, based on what we found in the previous formula. So that's 50 times 51 over 2, and then times k. 50 times 51, which is 1275k. And finally, let's try these out. So here we've got a sum of the first 70 terms. So this is essentially finding S70 given that this is our AN or AI if this was N. So let's try that out. We know we've got half times 70 terms and then the first term which is 2 times 1 plus 3 plus the last term which is 2 times 70 plus 3. And when we plug that in we're going to find the answer. So that's 35 times 2 plus 3 plus 140 plus 3, which is 5,180. And finally, we have the same thing starting from 1 going to 20, half of 20 terms, and then we've got half times 1 minus 1 plus half 
times 20, the last term, minus 1. And so we just need to plug that through. So that's 10, and then we've got a half plus, and then so we've got a half minus 1, minus 1 will be minus 2, and then plus 10. So put that all together. So you have 10 minus 2 plus a half, and then times 10 is going to give us 85. Now let's take a look at an application. There are 20 rows in a theater. The first row has 28 seats. So that's essentially telling us that A1 is 28. And the N number of terms is 20. The second row a2 has 32 seats. The third, A3, has 36 seats, and so on. How many seats are there in the last row? How many seats are there in the whole theater? Well, we can see that our first term is 28, then we have 32, then we have 36, and as rows get added, you can see that this is an arithmetic sequence and we're adding 4 each time. So our common difference is 4 and our initial term is 28 and to find the total number of seats, S20, we can use our formula. So we have 1 half of the number of terms times the first term, 28, plus the last term. So we have to find A20 which will be 28 plus the difference times 19, which is 104. And when we plug that through, we get 1320. So there are 1,320 seats in the total theater.